Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. I'm going to be building a journal. Um, I'm going to be installing the signatures inside of this book cover that we, this journal cover that we made. It's a fabric covered journal cover and this will be the one that I'll be working on currently. Um, so I'm just going to show you that process. It's going to be a hidden spine because I don't want to punch through uh, this particular spine. I want it to stay intact as is. And uh, so I'm going to be taking a piece of chipboard or cardboard and building a spine for the inside, which we can actually do now. Um, let's take a look at this. So I'm looking at this and I'm going to make a spine that's going to nestle inside here. And I want to see exactly how far over I need that to go. Let's see, where does that actually bend? bends there right after those two little dots. So I'm, I'm actually looking at those two little dots right there. That's pretty much where the fold goes in because you want your spine to get tucked in there nice and neat. And this piece of paper almost fits. Or this piece of cardstock, or not cardstock, chipboard. And I would say it needs to go to about there. And then lengthwise, I think I want to have it maybe be a quarter inch in from the top and the bottom, so maybe there. So let's go ahead and just cut this out. I'm going to use a my craft mat, this ruler, and a craft knife to do this. Cut. This. Let's put that here so I can square everything up. I'm going to follow that line down and turn it over so I can get a sharper mark. It's going to be just over that little mark. Okay. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut off this little piece. That'll give me the length. Okay. There we go, retracting the craft knife. And I think I might round the corners on this. The small end, I think that's the big end. I think this is the small corner rounder. Whoops, I'm gonna do this. Hmm. Not bad. It's a little wonky. Okay, this is a corner chomper. This one's not working that well because it's broken, but that's okay. It'll do the job. Now I want to use a stencil on there to cover it up a little bit. Maybe I'll use this stencil. It's a good coverage stencil. And I'm going to grab a dauber on my brown, really beloved, beloved. Daubers. I'm going to grab some brown and just go over this baby and color it up. Give it a little bit of coverage. So in case you see in between the signatures, the spine, it's going to look like it's somewhat decorated. And I think I'm going to go around and just maybe cover up these edges that I don't want them to look like cardboard. I want it to look like a, a solid book almost making something that looks like a bookmark or a giant tongue depressor here, but that's basically what it's going to look like. It's going to be strong enough to um, hold the uh, stuff in. And I think maybe I'll go around with some black as well, just for a little bit of impact around the edges. It looks a little more antiqued, fancier, and give it a little more pizzazz. And this is just optional, but I like doing this. It's very easy and very functional. Okay, so now we have our um, hidden spine. And hopefully if all goes well, we're gonna be able to put four punches through there and with attach the signatures to this and then glue the back of this with a lot of uh, Fabrifix. Now you wanna test to make sure that this sits nicely in there, okay? Because it's gotta glue flush to the back of, of the inside of the spine, and that does, that fits really well in there. So the book is easily able to be closed and open. Very important to test that, okay? 
All right, so we got that. Let's grab our papers. I've made three of the signatures already, and then we're gonna make the fourth one together just so you can see the process. It's the same process repeated four times for this book. And this book, in case you're wondering, whoop, is um, eight by five and a half and a one and a quarter inch spine. Okay, so across here is about one and a quarter. I'm gonna do four signatures with 12 pages each. Okay, you can do fewer signatures. You can do three with um, uh, 15 pages each, things like that, but you're gonna have more gapping in between the signatures here as they sit in there. Um, so that's just, an, it, but that's also good if you want to um, heavily decorate uh, because you'll have, well actually, if you want to heavily decorate, have fewer signatures and fewer pages in general so that when you bulk it up, you're not going to be fighting with so much paper in here. Okay, so that's that. Now, we're going to make one of these. Okay, this is the signature. It has random pieces of paper in it. And the ones that I chose for this one are, um, I'll just go, this is the way it looked before I folded it. But there, uh, I put coffee dyed papers, green dyed papers. I used um, a specialty Bombay ink for this, but you can use food color as well. This is an avocado dyed paper, college rule coffee dyed, and then just um, some stencil pages, more coffee dyed, more green, more college rule, just whatever you like. I used 12 pages. Here's some uh, nature stenciling here. And then I took it, I did one of these deals, organized them all up, folded it in half, Put it down, made sure that, remember, this is, a, if you were ever struggling with getting your signatures to be the same size and one not higher in, uh, than the other, um, this is a good technique to do that with. So then I took a bone folder and I creased it like that, okay? So now I have this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paper clip, paper clip at the top. And whoop, I had an extra. No, nope. there you go. Grab one here. Okay, I got a little one um, at the bottom just to hold everybody together. I actually don't want to really do that, but it's okay. Um, oh, there's the big ones. Okay, so now I want to decide where this is going to go in here. Okay, so I'm going to put it into the spine because I know it's going to go close to the spine, and then I'm going to close it in the book and kind of see where it sits, okay? So I know this is at the bottom. Okay, that is all, all the way to the bottom. Now I don't want my signatures necessarily to come all the way to the bottom. Eventually I'm gonna want them maybe a quarter inch in from the bottom and the top. Uh, but I do have about this much sticking out. And I have a little bit, um, not much, but remember I'm going to have that little magic piece of hidden spine paper that's going to go in here as well. And that's gonna be glued flush to the spine. Um, so you, I might have a little bit of overhang here. So that's what I'm kind of working on now. And, uh, so I'm going to take that out. Okay. And what I'm going to do is use this as a template, this actual signature, uh, signature. So it's all the way to the bottom. And I, whoops. You got to hold everything steady here, but I'm draw, I'm going to draw a line. It's going to show me approximately where to cut. This is a horrible line because the top of this is bumpy, but it's going to give me an idea and I'm going to shave off some of this. I know too about the, the where the first page starts. I'm probably going to cut off. Okay, so if you can see on here, I have a very bad line, but that very bad line is going to become my best friend. Okay. So let's go ahead and put the three paper clips on here that's going to mimic where I'm going to do that. Now, I couldn't really draw the line well down here, but I know it's going to be about where this first page starts, so that's going to be my line this way, okay? But at this point, I'm going to, instead of just doing one, I'm going to grab all three, and this is going to be my first one, my second one, my third one, my fourth one, but this one is actually, I'm going to put on top because it has the measuring on it, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to bring all the spines together and all the bottoms together. Okay. Okay. Spines together. Okay. 
and, when, and then the bottoms together. And they, the, both the two have to be in the correct orientation. So you look at the, the bottoms like this. Okay, is everybody aligned? They're a little bit almost perfect there. That's better. Okay. And then the spines. Okay. All right. So that looks pretty good. Make sure everybody is down where they should be. Take that extra second. This will be worth it. All right, so now you can grab these bulldog clips and secure the back where the spines are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice sharp craft knife and we're going to cut across here and cut down the edges and do them all at the same time so they're relatively the same size and shape. Okay, so let's do the top first. This may take a few passes because it's thick. Remember, it's four signatures thick. But we're trying to minimize the amount of cutting we, we're going to do here. The easiest thing to do is square it up on your craft mat and then follow that line as much as possible. Now remember, this took it from the very top to the very bottom of the book. Now I might want to do it about a quarter of an inch below that just so I have maybe an eighth of an inch at the top and an eighth of an inch at the bottom so the, the signatures are going to sit a little bit recessed into the book. Okay, let's try that. Okay, sharp craft knife. Go slow, go steady, and cut. I have to do this a little bit as you're going through lots of paper, but it will work. Slow and steady wins the race here. Okay, some of these are going to come loose. That's okay. We'll just remove them as they do. And you can use one as a template for the other for the other, but I found that things tend to move and uh, sometimes it's better to do them all at once because then you get uniformity. Okay. All right. And you think you're getting nowhere, but you are. Just stick with it. Keep your ruler steady. Okay, there's another big chunk. That's another signature that went. I think we've got maybe one or two more to go. <laughs> Almost through. Take your time, just steady pressure. of a lot of it. Okay, it's just up here near that spine. It's a little thick. There. Okay. All right, so now we have something that looks like that, which is pretty nice, you know? Nice and flush. And we're almost home free. I'm going to put this down. It's still, it's nice organized block. And I think what I'm going to shoot for is the first edge of the paper. Yeah, I'm going to flip this over because sometimes that extra sharpness is of the edge of the ruler is an advantage to get the blade closer. To the edge. So I'm going to cut off all this. Okay, so here we go again. All right, can you see? Yeah, okay. Go slow and steady, wins the race. All right. And we go, and we're going. And you can cut them all individually if you feel more comfortable doing that. You can cut them with scissors, cut them with a cutting thing, a guillotine. If you have a big paper cutter, you can cut it with that, like a big paper, professional paper cutter. I don't know how many folks have of those, but um, you can definitely do that. Okay. 
I just do a little at the top. For some reason, the top always lags. Okay, get some more of that off. And, okay, see where I'm at here. Using that first page as a template. I think I'm going to change the blade because I think it got dull already and you're going to find that using a sharp blade in this context is really advantageous. Close your eyes when you do this. Oh. There we go. Put that in a safe place where nobody gets injured and then start again with a sharper blade. Especially for a heavy cutting task such as this as it will Oh yeah, I mean, you can just feel the way the, the craft knife grabs differently. Completely different feeling. Okay. There we go. Yep. And try not to pull and tear because they will tear your papers. So don't Resist that urge. I'm almost there. Okay. I know it seems like molasses here, but it's worth the effort. Okay. Okay. All right, let's see what we've got so far. Not bad, there's a little rough edge right there. I'm just gonna go in and clean that up and I think we are home free. I'll try this one upright. I don't really need it to guide so much. It's just cutting off this little edge. There, I think we're free. Retracting, well now we have this. Okay, and then we have that. Pretty nice. Now. It's not perfectly smooth. Another little trick you can do in the heat of the moment is grab your old friend sanding block and get in there and you can do a little bit of this to soften the edges, which actually makes it feel more like an old book. Kind of a neat thing to do and it'll take away any of those little extra papery things that didn't quite go as planned. And it gives it a very nice soft feel to the edges of your book. So definitely a nice little trick. You can get these at Home Depot or Walmart, um, online anywhere, Amazon. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the big clips because we don't need those anymore. Now we're gonna test for size and snugness. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, that's what we got. Not bad. Now I am gonna stick that paper in there and glue it flush my, I might have to give it a good shove in there to get all in there. And I, there's a little bulkiness here, which I'm gonna have to distribute these evenly. So that will handle that. Okay, so looking good so far. We're gonna now grab that spine we made. And we're gonna put the book cover aside. Where are we? And we are going to grab our old friend. We have a lot of old friends around here. The, you know what it says on here? Where's the name of it? The Crocodile to Big Bite. Okay. And that is a hole puncher and an eyelet setter. And so I'm going to take, I'm going to start from the back. So I'm, this is the way it's going to go in the book. I'm going to turn it over and put this over here and grab the back one. Okay. I'm going to take these off. You don't want to be muddling around too much. Don't move these pages too much. Just go for that middle page. Find it. Okay, and then we want to clip your front and clip the other side bottom. Keeps everybody in the, the right place. Okay, and put him down, like we're gonna put him down. He's gonna be the back one. And take these off, find the middle. 
-hmm. and clip it here, clip it here. That's going to be the third one. And this is the, actually, I think, that, actually, they're all pretty, actually. They're all good. It's all good. Okay. But just decide what order you want the front and the back. And keep it straight because they will migrate around on you. Okay, I have you, and then you are going to be number one. Okay, there's the middle. And we're going to do that. And we're going to do that. Okay, so one. Two, I think it was three, four. Okay, try and get them back in the order that they were in because that's going to be, because uh, that's the way you cut them. So that it will make a difference. All right, so now this is our hidden spine. Okay, so this is what we're going to measure. This we want these the same distance. Put up all the spines down. Okay. Okay. And then you can use the uh, bulldog clips, if you can find them, to hold this one end together. Not necessary totally, but you can. So that holds all of those together. You just double check that your, your bottoms and tops are lined and your backs and fronts are aligned, so your spines are aligned. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, now we're going to put this on here. Okay, first of all, we need to put some dots on here. So we're going to use a little marker and we need to put four uh, dots. Now you can measure this. Um, I tend to eyeball it. So I know that's approximately the middle. So I'm going to put maybe one inch down. I'm going to put one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot. Okay. And then about, can you see this? Yeah, from inch up maybe. Uh, one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot. Okay, and then in the middle. Uh, dot here, dot here, dot here, and dot there. Okay, so now I'm going to come and punch all of those holes with. Actually, I, I'm going to do this first. I'm going to make my, I'm going, yes, I'm going to use this as a template. Okay, I'm going to take this block of signatures, put it on here and lay it exactly where I want it to lie. Okay, now this is a little wider than this. That's okay. Um, you want to take a pencil or a marker. We can use a marker in this case. Um, let me just orient this so you can see it a little better. Oh, uh, uh, hang on, hang on. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe use the second dot from the end, from the from the back side. Okay. And make this equidistant, the top and the bottom. Okay, so I'm looking at this little overhang, this little overhang is about the same. I'm going to use that dot as a guide. I'm using it as a line drawer. To, that's what I want to mark the backs of these signatures. Mark them well. And here. Okay, let's make sure we got dots on everybody. If somebody doesn't have a dot, you can go and draw it in so you can see it for sure. Those are all visible. You can do this with pencil too if you want, but I'm, I'm going to use marker so you guys can see it. See? There's the last ones. Here's the middle ones. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and punch these all out. I'm going to be, 
it's very important to mark top and bottom at this point. If you didn't do that, I'm just going to put T. So this is my top. This is going to be the top. Okay. Um, now you're going to take the crocodile do big bite. Let's see if I can show you this this way. Uh, but basically, I'm going to use that small one here. This top piece that's all the way over this way is going to operate the eyelet setter. You don't want that. There's there's the first position, second position, and third position. You want the second position that's going to operate the skinny one. If you go all the way to the right, it's going to operate the fat one. You don't want that one. You want the skinny one. Yeah, okay. So now we're just going to punch these holes. Put that little thing right over the hole. Right over the dot. Do your best to align them. So you're going to punch 12 holes. You know, it seems like a lot of holes. Okay, and this is the bottom. There we go. There's our top. All right, let me reorient. Okay. All right. Now we're going to punch these. So we can let them go. And we're going to, I guess we'll work from the back to the front. It's a good little rhythm to get in. Everybody's staying the same. So my, my marks are actually on the outside of the signatures. So just flatten it up. I like to fold it back a little bit upon itself just so it's easier to get the crocodile two over here. And we're going to use again the small puncher. See the small puncher? Um, it's going to go right where those dots are. One, two, and here's another thing you probably want to do, which I didn't tell you, but is important. You need to make sure that these were oriented so you know top and bottom. Okay, so I turned that around so this, okay, because these have to line up exactly, and that's the top. And if you forget, you can line it up. Then you know this is the top. I'm just going to put a, a little T here. I can erase that after. Okay, top. Okay, top, top. Top and top. Okay. Okay, so we have one done. Okay. No, wait, we can leave that on there actually. Let's just leave that there. And we'll just come in here, fold it back upon itself a little bit, and then go in here and punch the holes. One, two, Three. Okay. And we'll do these. I think I got these out of order. <laughs> this doesn't surprise me. Uh, okay. We'll just make sure they all line up again. Of course, I have Lawn Guy outside. I don't know if you can hear that, but he's doing his Lawn Guy thing. Thank you, Lawn Guy. Three. Okay, we've got that one. And then we got this one. my top. Doesn't matter whether you put this first or last, as long as you always have the top marked. It'll save you much agony, because that's another reason why things go awry. All right, so we have that. Okay, that was the second one. This one. Yeah, I think that was the correct order. Okay. Um, that feels right. Okay.